1995, a lad known as Lewis tragically became an orphan. His uncle Jonathan, hoping to provide a home for his nephew, extended an invitation through pen and paper for Lewis to reside with him. Upon Lewis's arrival at his final destination, his uncle materializes to assist with his heavy luggage, which Lewis confesses is filled with dictionaries, a testament to his affinity for unusual words. The boy expresses eagerness to view Captain Midnight at 10 o'clock, yet his hopes are dashed when Jonathan admits the household lacks a television set. Their journey comes to a halt, interrupted by the chime emanating from a large bell tower, an oddly structured building lined by walls. Jonathan fixes a steady gaze upon the tower until the sound ceases. Mounting a rather shabby vehicle, they proceed towards an eerie mansion adorned with jack-o'-lanterns. Lewis questions his uncle's fondness for the holiday, to which Jonathan replies with a statement indicating his year-long Halloween decor. As they approach the entrance, a woman known as Mrs. Hanchett, Jonathan's neighbor, intervenes. She accuses him of an unusually timed saxophone recital, objecting to its disruptive nature rather than its artistic quality. Upon introducing Lewis, Mrs. Hanchett is taken aback by the idea of Jonathan caring for another life. Jonathan agrees to minimize the din, though he admits his preferred playing time to be early in the morning at 3 a.m. Inside the house, Lewis is overwhelmed by an array of ticking clocks. The noise of shifting objects startles him, and Jonathan attributes it to a malfunctioning cuckoo. A woman named Mrs. Zimmerman appears, introduced by Jonathan as his adjacent neighbor. Amidst their arguing, Lewis senses an odd atmosphere within the mansion. Jonathan encourages him to live unrestrained, even proposing cookies for supper. During the night, Lewis is roused by the clang of metal, compelling him to investigate. He encounters Jonathan, who is attending to the wall, and a figurine bursts out of the wall decor, inducing fear in Lewis and sends him sprinting back to his room. The following morn, he overhears Jonathan and Zimmerman elaborating enthusiastically on a wall exploration. Jonathan dismisses Lewis to school in a jesting manner, leaving room for suspicion. At school, Lewis attempts basketball but soon fails, and shifts his focus to cricket with a fellow lad named Tarby, who is taken aback upon learning of Lewis's peculiar residence. Gossiping under his breath, Tarby shares with him the spooky history of their house, it's rumored to be haunted following the demise of a previous dweller. Lewis then encounters his mum, who speaks ominously of a book and key, before hinting at a looming danger. She cryptically questions whether he hears a ticking sound. As he turns toward the wall, Lewis is startled awake. Shortly thereafter, echoing footsteps capture his attention and he stumbles upon inexplicable occurrences in the house that instill fear and cause him to lose track of the source of the sounds. Suddenly, he finds Jonathan furiously hacking into a wall with an ax, triggering a panic response as Lewis retreats to his room and hastily begins to pack his belongings. His attempt to escape, however, is thwarted when he is persuaded by a picture on the wall and a chair that bars his exit. Lewis futilely bangs on the blocked door for assistance, but to his surprise, Jonathan materializes behind him and tranquilizes his fears, assuring that he won't be reduced to ax murder. He then escorts Lewis to the library and discloses his truth. Jonathan himself is a warlock, and the house was once owned by another warlock named Isaac and his wife Selina, who passed away a year prior, but had left behind his clock. While Lewis pleads with Jonathan to teach him how to become a sorcerer, Jonathan bequeaths a series of books to him and encourages him to study them thoroughly. Lewis wonders if defeating an evil spirit is a prerequisite for becoming a warlock, to which Jonathan decidedly replies, not for a long while. Just then, they are startled by a purple spider that suddenly leaps out the door, a byproduct of constant spell backfires from Zimmerman. Jonathan strictly warns Lewis against unlocking a certain cabinet, sequestered through incantations, and as he peruses through a history of Isaac's life, Zimmerman reports her failure in locating the missing clock. Tarby, witnessing a group of girls ridiculing Lewis for his eyewear, advises him to consider getting rid of them, which he does just as Jonathan pulls up in his motor. 
Under the illumination of a full moon, Lewis commences his first attempt at casting magic, and though his endeavor is flawed, Jonathan explains that it's the spirit behind it that holds more weight than the spell itself. To demonstrate the bizarre nature of their world more vividly, Jonathan fetches his saxophone and discords the tranquility of the night, agitating the neighborhood dogs. The spectacle wraps up with Jonathan gesturing towards the calm water in a fountain and prompts Lewis to tap it. Upon doing so, tiny, twinkling stars erupt and fill the sky with an enchanting cosmic array. Though initially enjoyable for Lewis, the pleasant experience is cut short when a nearby garden statue chooses that moment to deposit its waste upon him. Thus goes the life of Jonathan. Jonathan, the family's overlooked and very misunderstood black swan, makes a surprise appearance in Lewis's life. Lewis, driven by curiosity, starts dabbling in the magical arts. Astonishingly, he develops a knack for it, managing to change a cat's white fur into an array of colors, lifting Jonathan off the floor and unintentionally drenching a troublesome child. Jonathan, despite being a bit concerned about a wall clock, is consoled by Zimmerman, who reassures him that they'll find the source of the problem before it can harm Lewis. In no time, Lewis has advanced his magical abilities, transforming chores like making his bed into entertaining tasks performed by magic. At school, however, things turn sour with Tarby, the now popular election winner who grows increasingly uneasy about Lewis. Yet, Lewis convinces him to try magic to enhance his sports skills. Back at home, Jonathan stumbles upon the secret location of the clock, new found through a hidden passage in the lion statue. Jonathan finds a chart on a table and is overjoyed. While Lewis is at the library attempting to aid Tarby's resistance to accepting magic, he inadvertently reveals a forbidden book of necromancy. Swiftly, Lewis tucks the forbidden book away before escorting Tarby out. At the same time, Jonathan and Zimmerman decipher a cryptic illustration they found on the chart. Lewis is visited by his mother's spectral form and is prompted to use the book she mentions. The following day, Lewis persuades Tarby to give him another shot at magic, promising to raise the dead. With the stolen book in hand, he meets Tarby at the graveyard and starts chanting the spells, which eventually send Tarby fleeing in fear. Lewis also bolts home to replace the stolen book and conceal his breach of rules. Waking up, Lewis realizes his magic doesn't work anymore. Simultaneously, Jonathan finds all the statues congregated on the ground floor, warning ominously, he's back, he's coming home. Moving swiftly to the graveyard, he is stunned to find Isaac's grave desecrated. Jonathan pleads with Zimmerman for assistance in facing Isaac, disclosing his terror at the prospect of facing him alone. However, Zimmerman acknowledges her inability to support him and prompts Jonathan to reveal the truth to Lewis. Yet Jonathan objectifies, arguing that Lewis is too young. Regardless, she argues that she's still capable of wielding a hammer. They succeed in driving horseshoes into the entrance before Jonathan makes an unsettling discovery. The sweeping mural on the wall has morphed. It now depicts them each interred separately within coffins. Jonathan is poised to confess to Lewis about his actions, however, Zimmerman jumps in, warning that the culprit would face severe repercussions once discovered. Following Jonathan's advice, Lewis remains silent and chooses to stay with Zimmerman. There, he notices her inability to conjure magic sparks. He encounters a photograph capturing a performance where Jonathan and Isaac had once shared the stage. Zimmerman reveals their friendship and the eventual fallout when Isaac returned from wartime in Germany, transformed into a far more powerful sorcerer, later choosing to abandon Jonathan in favor of marrying an evil witch named Selina. It is suggested that Isaac had committed the horrific act of murdering his wife in order to carry out a blood ritual with the purpose of creating a bone key. Upon returning to school, a conversation with Tarby concerning the graveyard incident ensues. Lewis warns that Jonathan is now in peril because of them. However, Tarby dismisses it, 
He threatens Lewis with violence should he disclose their secret, assaulting him physically when Lewis attempts to resist. At the brink of defeat, Lewis is inspired by the word indomitable on an open page. With renewed courage, he returns to Jonathan's home. Upon entering the library, he discovers a peculiar chart on the table only moments before the room descends into chaos with books soaring through the air, causing him injury. He cries out for assistance. Both Zimmerman and Jonathan rush to his aid to quell the disturbance. With a stroke of genius, citing his knowledge from Captain Midnight's show combined with a set of cards, Lewis deciphers the chart. Jonathan realizes that the clock is a catastrophic doomsday clock set to turn time back on itself, regressing people until they cease to exist. Their home lies in disarray upon their return, prompting Jonathan to deduce that Isaac had been frantically searching for the bone key. They fail in their attempt to destroy it. Lewis comes clean about his involvement in resurrecting Isaac from the dead, which infuriates Jonathan, leading him to threaten Lewis with expulsion. Amidst Lewis's tearful pleas, Zimmerman extends her support, promising to convince Jonathan against this. Zimmerman advises against the abandonment of his younger sibling, a move reminiscent of his own estrangement. Speaking of Lewis's mother, she comes away from their verbal exchange, labeling Jonathan a fearful character, exiting the scene dramatically. The distant yelps of Marmalade, pooch of Mrs. Hanchett, shift the boy's focus. He spies Mrs. Hanchett and Isaac nearby, but over in her residence. The pair dash across, arriving at Mrs. Hanchett's home, leaving her with many questions. Convinced of the necessity, Lewis escorts the lady across to Jonathan's abode she seemingly robbed from her home. At Jonathan's place, the trio awaits. Zimmerman is on the brink of exiting the room when the door is sealed by an unseen force. While Jonathan staunchly works on the locked door, Isaac makes his presence known at the main entrance. Lewis tries in vain to halt Mrs. Hanshep from she permitting Isaac's entry. His efforts take a major hit when she uncloaks herself as Selina, her faithful pet dog Marmalade, morphing into a rodent. Lewis's truth about their mortality come into question when Selina proves they're very much alive. The bone key, a keepsake from Mrs. Hanshep, remains revealed their survival. She had lain in hiding during Isaac's premature death. Selina ominously transforms into Lewis's mother and he recognizes her as a figure from his dreams. She confesses her failed attempts at reaching the safe and used the boys as pawns instead. In a twisted turn of events, Isaac requires him to retrieve the key on their behalf. Meanwhile, Jonathan and Zimmerman manage to break free, stumbling upon a secret space, Isaac's deceptive trap. Lewis is marooned mid-air within a cage, sharp blades lurking beneath him. A key opens the treacherous trap. Above the cage, a rat gnaws at his only support, threatening to send him plummeting to a grisly fate. Isaac entreats for the key in exchange for Lewis's freedom. He regales them with tales of his time in the forsaken Black Forest and encounters with Azazel, a notorious prince of hell. In a bid to procure the key from Jonathan's possession, Isaac resorts to threats of magic, but Zimmerman staves off his attempts with remarkable sorcery, rescuing Lewis and halting Selina from obtaining the key. Jonathan nearly secures the key but is thwarted by Isaac's luminous assault. Zimmerman's timely intervention saves Jonathan, but not the key, for Isaac claims it and promptly vanishes with Selina. Their departure incites a chase powered by toys and jack-o'-lanterns. When the Hex's location is uncovered, they race back. Zimmerman takes control, wielding her magic against their foes. In a clandestine whisper, let me share the tale of toys, enchanting orbs, and a mystic clock. As it unfolds, the dear lass fails to reach the spell-casting symbol, the hex, amidst her playful trinkets. Simultaneously, our lad Jonathan undergoes a surreal transformation, regressing to infantile state when attending to an exceptional clock. Dreadfully so, it falls on Lewis's slender shoulders to halt the ticking behemoth. Guided by the mystic orb, he is prompted to utter his farewells. Upon his parting words, 
he tosses the orb at the daunting clock, causing it to snag onto it and unwind all narrative threads. Our brave Lewis becomes the savior of the day. He brings Jonathan back from his unanticipated childhood, thwarting the adverse intentions of Isaac and Selena for all eternity. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you in the next video.